Hey guys, Kirk here, and thank you for joining me on a new video on the channel. This video is going to be the final video in which we rebuild our material layer for our landscape shader in Build Worlds V2. Over the past few videos of our material layer rebuild, we've rebuilt our albedo logic, uh, which is more suitable for uh, from an artist's point of view. Um, we've also implemented an ORD texture. That's to bring our material layers up to the times as most people now use uh, Quixel Bridge for their textures um, in Unreal Engine. So we've utilized our ORD texture and we've also re-implemented our normal texture. Um, what I want to do in this final video is to build up a bit of logic to add a detail normal to our normal texture. It's gonna work off our camera depth fade uh, node function which is included with Unreal Engine. Um, and essentially what it means is the, de the normal map for our specific material layer will add detailed normals to that normal map. So it'll look more detailed the closer the player is to the landscape. And that specific detailed normal will follow the player around, but fade away at a certain dis distance. So a lot of instructions won't be used uh, when utilizing this i'm going to be honest this is probably the first time well no not probably it is the first time i've ever added a detailed normal to a normal texture on a material layer on assets that's fine like rocks and boulders and uh, other little assets that you would use when building worlds uh, adding detailed normals is quite common but adding them detailed normals to a landscape material layer I've never really done before so I'm quite interested to see how it works and pans out um, so yeah that's what we're going to be doing once we've built our detailed normal logic I'm going to sort the order of these out but I probably will speed the video up when I do that um, as most people who keep viewing this channel have already viewed all this uh, before where I've set up priorities and all that good stuff um, and then we'll go on and test the material layer uh, at the end of the video. And then after this, we will be moving on to our slope layer and rebuilding our triplanar uh, projection. We'll just be utilizing world aligned textures in our, our slope layer, which I have never done on this channel before. So that'll be a good thing as well. Uh, but what I want to do is get straight into it now, build a function that's going to sit right here and be our detail normal. Uh, so let's get going. So we're going to come to our content draw. I'm specifically in my functions folder where all my functions are. I'm just going to right click, go to material, and then in the drop down, choose material function. And we could just call this detail uh, normal underscore logic. Right, so, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Uh, we'll do a quick save, control and S. Just save that up. We'll highlight it, control and S, and it'll save this particular function. Um, how should we start this? We'll start this by adding a texture sample in here. We'll hold T on the keyboard and left click. And this will add a texture sample, and this will hold our detail normal uh, texture. Uh, we're going to give the artist the option to add their own detail normal texture. They don't have to use our... Um, the normal map from the material layer, although it is recommended, but like I said, we'll give them the option. So detail normal texture. Uh, this is where, like I say, you can input your own detail normal texture if you don't want to utilize the material layer one. Uh, we could add a switch in here, and so the artist could have the option to add their own detail normal texture or not. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because that'll just raise instructions ever so slightly, but it'll still raise them. I'm going to highlight the texture sample, left control and D. Then right click and convert to a texture object and this will stop any errors that we get in here. In here I'll just add a default normal. Normal. We'll just add the default normal texture. And that'll enable us to have a default normal in there. And there we go. Uh, what we also want is our UVs to come in. So we'll hold M on the keyboard and left click and get a multiply node. 
And essentially what this is going to do, we could essentially just add our UV straight in, but I want to multiply our UVs that are coming in. So I'll go on here and get a function input. Uh, it's going to be of a scalar value. And we'll just call it UV input. Like so. And what I want to do here is hard code our value in. I'm going to get a constant one vector by holding one on the keyboard and left clicking. Plug that into our multiply. And from the offset, I am going to add a value of five. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking our UVs from our normal texture um, and plugging them into our diesel normal logic and then just multiplying it by five. Like I say, we're going to hard code that. If you wanted to give the option to change the UVs of a detail normal map, just get an input, a function input, and add that in there. Like I say, I'm just going to hard code it in so the artist can't change it, which is completely fine. We'll plug that in our UVs. Like so. Bring that up here. Keep it all neat and tidy. Okay, from there, we're going to want to sort out our intensity. So if I go... Uh, get normal. Uh, in fact, we'll just take it from here. This normal logic that we built in the previous video was left control and C make a copy, then left control and V and bring it in here. And we're going to use this to increase the strength of our normal intensity, but at the same time, I want to be able to increase that normal intensity, but use the camera depth fade through there. So instead of just dragging off here and getting an input and having normal intensity, I'm going to get a multiply node, hold M on the keyboard and left click, and then we'll plug that into our normal amount. Um, we could drag off the A input of our multiply and get a function input. And this can actually be our detail normal intensity, like so. And this will control how strong our normal intensity is for our detailed normal. Um, but we're also going to utilize our function, which is a cam depth fade function. And essentially what this function does is it just... Um, it enables our detailed normals to kick in at a certain range. So if I right click on our function and start previewing it, you'll see here in the 3D viewport, let's make that a bit bigger. Like right, so, you'll see in our 3D viewport that like, it's white at the minute. But if I get ever so close to it, you'll see that it goes to black. It fades from white to black. Now, when it's white, when that sphere is white with our camera depth fade function, it's going to show our detailed normal texture or our detailed normals on the surface. And then when we get close to it, it's going to fade out into black. And when it's black, then there's no detailed normals. But we don't want that. We want it to be black here and then white when we're really close to it. So we simply drag off our camera depth fade and get a one minus. And this will invert it. So if I right click and start previewing it, you'll see it's white now. But the further away I get, it turns to black. Very simple logic. Um, it's quite powerful. Uh, so from there, we can plug that into our multiply. So we're getting our camera depth fade logic um, into here. Let's just sort this out a little bit. Um, we're getting our camera depth fade and then we're multiplying it by our detail normal intensity. The more we increase, the more the detail map is uh, increased plus why we're multiplying our ca camera depth fade. Um, we're going to want the artist to have the option to change the length um, so if I get a function input, right, so and this could simply be our uh, detail normal, we'll put in brackets, um, cam depth fade, I've missed the capital D, we'll go to the end and get another brackets, camera depth fade, like right, so. So we could change that as well. We'll duplicate that and we'll change this to our offset. Now here you don't have to use the word offset. I'm going to use it. Uh, you could change that to transition if you want. It's essentially the same thing. 
at these. Okay. Right, so, um, shall we include a value? See, for me, um, it's not going to showcase anything here because there's no preview. But for me in here, you'll see if you hover over the input, it says default value of 512. Uh, for me, that's quite close. Um, for the fade, the fade's fine. If I hold one on the keyboard, we'll duplicate that as well. Right, so, and this is going to be our fade, so we'll keep that at 24. No problem with that. We'll set both of these two to preview it in the details panel here. And then here, instead of using 512, we're going to use something like 1500. And then we'll plug that in there. And if I come to this now, we'll use the inversion. Start previewing this. You'll see it's white here. And then further away we get it'll transition a lot better to black, where the detail normal will not show. Um, which is cool. So we'll stop previewing that. Essentially, we're nearly done here now with our detail normal. Um, what we need to do now is have a way for our normal map to come into this function. Uh, so we can drag off here. We're going to get a blend angle corrected normal function. And this detail normal is going to be an additional normal. It's not our base normal. Uh, this normal here is our base normal. Uh, so we'll drag that in and we'll drag off our base normal and get a function input again. And this could be our um, normal texture input. It's not our detail normal texture, it's our normal texture input. Right, so, so our logic here in our main master layer logic um, this bit here is going to drag off and come into this normal texture input here um, I'm going, yeah i'm going to want our artist to have the option of whether to turn this on and off someone's just beeps there on that's something else uh, so we're going to get a static switch and this could be true. And if it's false, we can utilize that. Uh, just a normal texture. So essentially, if this Boolean is false, um, the normal texture will come in and just carry on through and go out so it's not used. We'll drag off our value, get another function input. Um, we're going to change it, the input type to a static bool. And we'll put in a enable. Uh, detail normal in there it doesn't really matter the name so long as you understand what it's actually doing uh, we'll drag off the preview and get a bool even though you don't set it as a preview there in the detail panel uses value as default uh, you will still get an error unless you add that uh, boolean in there okay so that is pretty much our detail normal logic set up. Now I've got my fingers crossed to make sure this works. Uh, we're going to expose the library. Uh, let's sort these inputs out real quick. Make this a bit bigger. It's already exposed to the library. We'll just save that. Okay. Now we're all saved. Um, duplicate this and change this to a detail we'll type it in detail um, detail normal logic which is there so we've got our texture input um, now we could just simply put that in there but we can't put it in there so what we can, yeah, we'll just add that in there, like so. Yeah, it should work. Um, and then the result can just go in the normal output. What we'll do, we'll do a quick save here of our shader. Um, as, you, as it is prone to crashing when you add new logic in. We'll just create that there. Uh, 
I'm slowing down a little bit here. Okay, so now we've done that. Um, yeah, I can't see why that won't work, because essentially we're just using, yeah, like I stated, yeah. That's right. So the UV input will go into there, because we essentially, we want to be able to change our texture with our UV near. I mean, we could do far, but there'd be no need for that, um, as we won't see detailed normals at the far distance. Uh, but we're just utilising our UVs near, and then inside the function, if we remember, it's multiplied by 5, which is hard-coded in. So yeah, that makes sense, actually. Uh, just got a bit of a numbrain. So our default uh, detail normal intensity. So we'll drag off there. Get a function input. Uh, this can be our detail normal intensity. <laughs> Forgot how to spell then. Um, we can drag off there. We'll get an R E R. Reroute detail. Uh, uh, reroute declaration node. And this could just be our DN for detail normal. And then dash intensity. Like so. We'll duplicate that. And this could be our detail normal. Um, cam depth fade duplicate that again this could be our offset offset like so uh, keep that like that and there are inputs essentially um, Duplicate this two more times. I'm just sorting the inputs out for these. So for this one, uh, what we will do is just do a save. It might kick us out, but it has not. Just saves it um and yeah that should work in all honesty that really should just work um i can't see any reason why not I mean, we set it up all right um just double check in there yeah it's all set up okay um so what i am going to do now guys is just quickly run through here we don't need the texture section oh wait there yeah we do we'll cancel that off uh, like I say, I'm going to go through this now and just sort out, sort out all the inputs and how I want them. Uh, essentially, everything's wired up. Everything seems uh, logical, apart from um, our outputs here, which I'll sort out towards the end uh, after this. But what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to speed it up why I sort this out, because uh, there's a lot of inputs here that are not being used. There's a lot here without... Well, I think they've all got reroute declaration nodes applied already. Um, but yeah, uh, give me a moment. I'll sort all this out, guys, and I'll see you on the other side. Right, okay, I think um, that is done. As you can see, it didn't take too long on the video, but in reality, it took a while. Um, let's just highlight them too, shift and D. Um, so now I hope if I save this now, it should all be changed in here. We've got our textures at the top, our material UVs here. Um, I don't know if you got that in the sped up version of the video, but I actually um, uh, set the priorities of all these inputs and then realized I've not done the distance from range uh, set priorities. Um, I can highlight all of them, hold left control and highlight all of them, shift and D, you know, just line everything up all right. Um, like so. Um, but yeah, uh, that's okay. So we'll hit save again. Um, what we can do now is have a look in here. Um, this bit's 
you know, the way I want to set this up is uh, important as well. Uh, I'll move this over. Um, I'm going to give ourselves a bit more space. What I want to do, guys, is give our artists the option to enable or disable textures. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to set this up. We're going to rename these. Keep it in mind, this is Grass A Layer. So if I set this up as Grass A Albedo, um, shall I do it that way? Um, for the parameter name, this is gr grass a albedo. Um, don't forget now we're using an ORD texture. So our roughness uh, ORD texture. That's all. Oh, I forgot the grass a part. That's <laughs> uh, so all grass. A ORD texture uh, like so, and then we've got our grass A normal. Grass A normal uh, texture, as you can see, I've left that normal on the end. And we want all this to marry up correctly, so we'll go back to our albedo, just put texture on the end. So, um, so now we've got a grass A albedo ORD normal texture and we can actually get rid of that height one uh, which is fine we only need them three now uh, what we'll do first is set this up so grass A what I'm going to do is just put options because I'm going to have them all in the same so options all the scalar parameters are going to be the same. What I want to do now, like I say, is set something up where we can enable and disable whether we want um, our textures to be shown. So if I get a switch, um, static switch parameter, and I can put a name or I could be it could be grass a show. Textures. Right, so it could be like that. Um, do I need the brackets? That's what I'm thinking about now. Uh, so, grass A show textures. Um, let's go back. Oh, I think I'll change that. Textures. Right, so, we don't need the brackets. We can clearly see what we're getting out here. So grass A show textures, all we have to do is duplicate this another two times. And we'll just drag these into the tree. Like so. Uh, nice and easy. And we'll just create a bit of space here in between each of them. Um, don't forget, once this is done, guys, we can just literally duplicate this layer. A bit like what I'm talking about with the biomes. Uh, we can just duplicate them up it's all fine so shift and d shift and d they're all set what i need now is a texture object so if i right click convert to constant that now becomes a texture object and i can just put that into the false like so did easy uh, we'll do that for each of them uh, okay now uh, we'll quickly save that um, and then we'll start plugging them into here. I can't really see it crashing, if I'm being honest, but now I'll probably jinx myself uh, because in the actual logic, we've not created the outputs. Um, but it can still crash, don't get me wrong, but let's just get this built up. So now the textures are done, so we'll get that. We're going to set this to Grass A options. And the whole thing with this, guys, was... Essentially, I wanted to change them all from the flat ground grass texture nonsense to actually what the material layer is. Uh, so all these could be defaulted to off, and that just means it won't show the textures. We'll change that to grass A, and we'll put this at a zero. 
uh, for show textures and now our material textures are done uh, what we need to do what I need to do sorry or if you're following along what we need to do is to sort out our uh, material UVs Okay, now the priorities are all set up. Um, we need to test this now, but before we can test it, we need to plug it in and hope for the best. We're going to go to our build main. All is saved. Uh, Master logic is saved. Grass A layer is now saved. Let's plug all these in, guys. Let's hope for the best. Uh, obviously it looks a little squee with there uh, because our values are not set up uh, but as it stands that's our master of logic let's save that up uh, we'll go in here as you can see that we're starting to get our texture to come through but like I say that is because of all the uh, logic sorry if you can hear me scratching guys let's go for this We'll leave that like that. I've got a feeling it's this that is doing it. So brightness one. No. Um, contrast. Just gonna be one. There you go. Okay. So that is that set up. Let's hit save and apply that. Come back to the map. We'll quickly test this out uh, before we end the video. Oh. Actually, wait, I've not even plugged the material layer in. As you can see, only got this set up. Um, what I'll do, I'll come out of landscape mode. We'll go to our landscape shader, open this up. We just want to test the layer, don't we? So that was grassy, which is here. We'll just test this into the grasslands biome, like so. Uh, hit apply now it's saving should compile shaders did that rather quick and there you go there was our material layer um, let's go into our material instance as you can see I'm getting the important material controls at the top here uh, enable macro variation, ground foliage, we don't need that on yet, and all this other stuff. All these are not important. What we need to do is test these grass A options real quick. Uh, show textures, they should pop up at the bottom, which is great. I'm getting a little bit of stuttering now because all the stuff's been rewritten. Uh, so we can turn that off. Uh, debug layer, um, if we go back into our distant mask. Oh, it was right at the end there. Sorry, guys. Debug layer. 
Uh, if we look at that, it's set to white. Sorry about that. I'll put it right at the top. So if we click on debug layer, all this should just turn white. As you can see, that's turned white, which is great. Uh, enable grass texture breakup. Uh, as you can see, it's quite repetitive. So if I enable this, there you go. That's a lot better. It's still a bit of repetition, but you'll really struggle. So if I go to uh, texture breakup here, it's already set to one. Let's go two, three, five, zero, one. It is working. We just need to move the UVs. We'll go to five. Uh, so the texture breakup controls are not working. So that's something we'll have to explore. Let me switch back. Uh, enable distant logic. I enable this now. Should change the colours. Um, this is something we'll have to change. It is working. So distance. On there. Oh no, that's... Ah, yeah. That's a blending, so we'll go one with a far. Oh, there's a possibility I may crash here. So we'll set that at 15,000. It's going to be at 35,000. There we go. And now we can clearly see our debugging is correct for our distant tiling. So this just showcases the colour bands at which um, we're changing. You can see the yellow band here is the blend between the far and the mid. Uh, but yeah, so that's working, which is great. Just come over here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, guys. That's why debug distant logic is right. Um, and then the special one is enable detail normal. Let's just slow this down real quick. This video is getting quite long. Let's go onto our detail normal logic. You can see intensity can be, we'll set that to five for now. Uh, Camera depth fade, what was that set at? 1500. Um, no, camera depth offset was 20. And it is actually working, as you can see there, guys. Look at the dark shadow. The detail normals do kick in. I reduce that to zero. Five. I'll do 50 so we can clearly see what is going on. It's not something we want to do, but you can see there. That is perfect. The range at which some detail normals kick in. Uh, so yeah, quite happy with that, guys. Apart from the um, navel texture breakup, we may have to look at that again. But sometimes things like that don't work unless you have other things enabled. So we'll disable that. Um, Look at texture breakup controls. 50. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see it changing now. So it is working. 50. Go 10. If I get close to it, it will work now. Yeah, you can see it changing there. You see the texture changing. Oh, that's good then. We'll leave that 6, 10. Oh, that's 9, 10. On Kirk. 6, 10, it's going to be 500. And yeah, so our texture breakup is working. If I go to zero, there you go. 1, 50, 0, 50. Uh, we'll leave that at 15 for now. Uh, that'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, so quite happy with that, guys. Um, UVs 
Down there. Yeah, that's working fine. How far? Let's set that to a one. Yeah. You look at the mountain range over there, you can see it on the cliff wall there. So that's one. Yeah, that's 50. Yeah, that's what we want. 50 is fine. And then for here we can go 550. In the mid. And the near can be 1100. Right, so. Yeah, so the UV controls. Um, colour and brightness. Let's go to zero. Yeah, so 0.35. Seems like a nice uh, range. Let's just quickly change the colour. There you go. There you go, yeah. Just set them all to one, that works. Uh, common options, contrast, zero. Perfect, one, 1.2. Seems like a good contrast amount, saturation, zero. There you go, completely desaturated. One with full saturation. We even go to five. Oh, incredibly stupid looking stuff. Uh, but 1.21 is about a good colour depth. Really nice. Uh, maybe just one actually. Yeah, that seems about right. Uh, normal, zero. Five. Zero. Five. Yeah. So. Maybe a 1.6 for the normal. It's a bit too much for normal in my eyes, but it looks good. Uh, roughness, zero, zero, zero. Um, have a look at this. And maybe if we go to a 1. 0.5 on the minimum, 1 on max. Uh, roughness may need a bit more work. Um, AO 1, 0.5, 1, yeah, so 0, or oh, 0.5, sorry, 1, yeah, that works as well. Uh, so, yeah, pretty successful, guys. Um, it has been quite a long video, but at the moment, we have our grass A layer set up. All we would have to do now is to find where grass a is if i click on this little icon here it will show me in the content drawer where it is so grass a is there it's textures we don't need these textures anymore we'll save on some hard drive space um, actually 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 oh wow yeah uh, so in our ord texture guys i'm using a roughness texture that makes loads of sense with our roughness and, oh yeah. Uh, so essentially I need to import some ORD textures for this to work uh, properly. Um, so yeah, that's the problem. But as it stands, I'm quite happy with how that has turned out. Um, with our material layer. Um, what I'm going to do, this is going to be off camera, I'll import some uh, textures from Quixel Bridge to work on our landscape. Um, and what I'm going to do is, also off camera, is duplicate our material layer. If I go into layers here, you'll see I've got my masters here. I'll utilise what we've done here and create a new master. Our slope master is the next form of videos. Then we have our flat ground biome. Uh, biome slope, forest biome, dirt A, dirt B, dirt C. I'm going to change all of these off camera. There's literally no, no reason for me to do record myself doing it. Um, all you have to do is go to the layer that we've just made, click on this, make a copy of it, and set it into your masters folder here. Yep, so if I open that master layer, you'll see I'm getting loads of errors because all the changes we've made are here now this is the master logic that we've just done but you can see it needs work still so i'm going to duplicate our grass layer a um, and put that in the masters i'm going to re-download all these um quicks over textures so they'll work and i'm going to set it up so all of our 
uh, landscape shader is correct so the next time in the video i'll have a multitude of different textures the flat ground blending would have been set up and everything like that what you've seen in this particular video and in previous videos you could now do on your own so i'm going to set like i say i'm going to set up a grass layer a grass b grass c dirt a dirt b dirt c and so on and so on and just set up multiple different layers and then since our uh, earlier videos where we reinstated all our Batman logic here if you've not seen that video it's a couple of videos ago I'm going to start blending all these material layers together so the next time that you join me in a video we're just going to concentrate on the slope players and getting that right uh, but sorry it's a long video again um, like i've stated in the past i do like to showcase my videos in detail i know the long uh, i'll speed up as much as i can uh, when editing the video um, but from me that is going to be it like i say in the next video we're going to be concentrating on the slow player that won't take nearly as long as this rebuild of these material layers but i'm happy with what we've done up to now and I'll showcase my final results in the next video uh, before we do the slope layer. Uh, so for now, this is Kirk signing off and I shall see you later.